When I was growing up, I was really close to my mushum or my grandpa, and he was brown. And then I popped out this color, and he told me that that was my saving grace because I was going to be able to get by without people knowing what I was. My name is Iskwe. I'm a recording artist. My mother is Cree, Dene, and Métis, and my biological father's family comes from Ireland. I paint my face based on things that I've seen when I go to community gatherings, when I see old images of warriors who are strong and, and fighting for their people. I don't paint my face because this is the way Cree people do it or this is the way Dene people do it. I paint my face because this is the way Iskwe does it. Lay me down now. I've got freckles, I've got blue eyes, I've got curly hair and I recognize that to a lot of people I'm not the, you know, face of what is indigeneity in, in Canada. And that's cool. I'm here to be like, this is, this is one of the faces. And so I've got brown people in my family, I've got white people in my family. It was funny because I had a really very close relationship with my grandpa growing up. I was always really proud and I was always like, yeah, I'm indigenous, like, this is who I am. I'm very excited to be this person. And he was excited too, but then he, would, he was worried for me, right? Because he, growing up, wasn't allowed into certain places because he was indigenous. Having grown up in a family that is of mixed background, it's a funny place to walk in. It's like you, you do walk in two worlds. And who, who is identifying in which world was also something that wasn't always comfortable in my family. I've got cultural pride and then I've got cultural concern where people are ashamed of, of that part of our background. And I think the things that I hold on to the most are the moments that I have with family where they are proud of the fact that I've held on to it so tightly. You know, those are things that, um, those are the things that you have to hold on to because it's, it's a little tougher, I think, to, uh, to forever listen to that other stuff. You gotta let that go. I think the stereotypes and, and the thought that indigenous youth are lazy or aren't going to make their way out of these cycles of negativity, I think those ideas and thoughts come from a lack of understanding and a lack of knowledge. Before I was a musician, my background was really heavily invested in working with Indigenous youth. I try to veer the question back as, why is this happening to this youth? Why is this youth experiencing abuse, alcoholism, poverty, lack of education, lack of resources, lack of clean drinking water? Why is that happening? Nobody wants to live that way. Nobody wants to live in poverty. Nobody wants to live with abuse. People want to be happy. And if we look at somebody else and we say, oh, they're living that way by choice, then we're, we're not being truthful to ourselves about what it is that has happened to this individual. Our younger generations are, you know, they're, they're the ones that we need to nurture and take care of and help launch into the future. Indigenous youth are strong and resilient and full of power and pride. So when I write, I keep that in mind. I, I keep our young ones in mind and I write for them. I think in order for us to build our relationships between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. We have to understand the past and we have to be a part of the history that has happened. It doesn't mean that we're all to blame for things that have happened hundreds of years ago, but it means that we're all here right now and we all need to be a part of these conversations in order for the relationship to heal and move forward.